Hello everyone, I am Meghamala, working as assistant professor from Electronics and Communication Department in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. And today's topic is Analysis of Asynchronous Sequential Machines. So, uh, basically in the previous classes we have discussed what is a sequential machine and in sequential machine we have discussed about the categories and as well uh, analysis of synchronous sequential machines as well we have discussed in the last class. So now today in this class we will be going to learn something new about asynchronous sequential machines. So compared to synchronous and asynchronous differentiation, synchronous is nothing but uh, the output it can be uh, the delays or else the output can be observed synchronously. That means what the time delay uh, won't be occurred, occurred that much. So, in synchronous sequential machines, the approximate time delays with different, with uh, the proper time delays, the output will be observed. Whereas here, with respect to time, uh, the output is observed with respect to time in the synchronous sequential machines. Whereas in the asynchronous sequential machines, we see the time delay would be varied, okay, from one cycle to the other cycle. So, comparing uh, the synchronous and asynchronous, the asynchronous sequential machines does not use clock pulses. So here in the last class in the sequential uh, synchronous sequential machines, we have discussed about the D flip flop. Okay, basic uh, sequential, basic storage devices. These flip flops and latches are nothing but the storage elements. So based on the storage elements in the synch uh, synchronous sequential machines, we have discussed about the uh, working principle of the synchronous sequential machine. So in the synchronous sequential machines, we have observed that by considering the example of flip-flops and latches, we have seen that the clock pulses are, uh, with respect to the clock pulses, the time period t and for the t for the present state and the time period t plus 1 for the next state. So this is what we have observed in synchronous sequential machines. But whereas in asynchronous sequential machines, we see the there is no they don't use the clock pulses so it means that they don't use this uh, storage devices like flip-flops and as well the latches and the memory elements in asynchronous sequential uh, circuits are either unclocked flip-flops or time delay elements so here uh, in the asynchronous sequential machines uh, the storage purpose the storage elements are need not to be the flip-flops and latches but here in asynchronous sequential machines, the storage devices will be unclocked flip-flops. So unclocked flip-flops are nothing but the latches and as well the time delay elements. Okay, but whereas in synchronous sequential machines, we see the storage devices are of uh, flip-flops and latches. Those are the basic storage uh, elements where they store one bit of information. But in the asynchronous sequential machines, we see the uh, asynchronous sequential circuits are uses the uh, for the storage element purpose. They use the unclocked flip flops or the latches, and as well the time delay elements. And the change in input signal can affect memory element at any instant of time. So here. Uh, basically, asynchronous sequential circuits are nothing but the output can be observed not with respect to the time. Okay, so here uh, the change in the input signal. So whatever the uh, input, the signals in the uh, signals with respect to the input, if we see any changes, the it can affect the memory element at any instant of time. So at any instant of time, the memory element can be affected and this effect uh, is done or else this effect can be seen with uh, only due to the changes in the input signal. So if you find any, if you see any uh, changes in the input signal, obviously there will be a change in the memory element at any instant of time. That means what, uh, not only the particular times, but at any instant of time, the output can be uh, observe and that changes will be made uh, only with respect to the input side and because of the absence of clock it can operate faster than synchronous uh, circuits so here in the synchronous circuits we are not using uh, the storage elements are uh, are off without the clock pulses right so here they are uh, unclocked flip-flops that means unclocked storage elements we are considering in the asynchronous 
uh, sequential circuits. So because of the absence of clock in the synchronous sequential circuit, in the synchronous sequential circuits, we see there will be a clock. For example, flip flops and latches. Whereas in asynchronous sequential circuits, uh, they are unclocked storage elements. We use unclocked, right? So because of the absence of clock, that means what here we see no clock. So unclocked in the absence of clock, it can operate faster than the synchronous. So uh, 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 when we compare the swiftness of the two uh, machines, uh, the synchronous and asynchronous sequential circuits, mm -hmm. we see the synchronous sequential circuits, uh, they run so less, okay? Uh, whereas the asynchronous sequential circuits, they can operate uh, faster than the synchronous because here in the synchronous sequential circuits there is no clock pulses are used whereas in synchronous we use the clock pulses because all the storage devices all, all the storage elements like flip flops and latches they will be using the clock signals okay so that's the reason we see when it compares uh, when it uh, comes with respect to the fastness uh, compared to the synchronous asynchronous uh, sequential circuits uh, we see they can operate faster than the synchronous sequential circuit and compared to the uh, design uh, when it comes to the designing part the synchronous asynchronous sequential circuits are difficult to design when compared to the synchronous sequential circuits designing part is all about difficulty we see in the asynchronous sequential circuit but when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the synchronous sequential circuit the designing of the uh, things can be observed or else we can easily design the synchronous sequential circuits and then the analysis of asynchronous sequential circuits consists of obtaining a table a figure or else a diagram that describe the sequence of internal states and outputs as a function of changes in the input variables. So here, uh, when you compare the synchronous and asynchronous sequential circuits, both the sequential machines, they have the table, okay, state table followed with a state diagram. And as well, uh, this state diagram, uh, this describes, okay, it describes the sequence of what? Sequence of internal states. Okay, the transition between the states. So the sequence of internal states and as well as the output as a function of changes in the input variables. So whatever the input variables at the input sites are changing, that effect will be observed at the output. And based on that, we can easily draw a truth table and followed with the, uh, uh, draw the state table followed with the state diagram and as well, uh, the describe uh, this state table and state diagram they both describes the internal states and as well as the output in the previous class also uh, when we are discussing about the synchronous sequential machines uh, we have discussed some example based on the four states s1 s2 s3 and s4 so the transition between the states takes place with respect to the input and as well as the output okay and also, uh, in order to uh, draw the circuit or also to draw the state diagram, uh, all the sequential uh, machines has to go three steps. One is input, the second one is output, and the third one is, it's all about the transition between the states. Okay, so this is what we observe for each and every uh, state diagram and followed with the state table. So here, if you observe, this is an example of a synchronous sequential circuits. So here you have, like we have y1 and y2 are the two inputs, y1 and y2 are the two inputs given to the uh, two AND gates. So here in this particular figure, if you observe, we have two OR gates, three AND gates and two NOT gates. Okay, so here the output y1 is nothing but the boolean expression that we have got is with respect to the state diagram. So here y1, y1 is nothing but x y1 plus x bar y2. So if you observe y1, we know that x into y1, this is input x into y1. So this is AND gate x into y1 plus 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 x bar isn't it so the not gate is given to x bar so x bar 
an and get an y2 and y2 so this is about the x1 the expression one of the output y1 expression we got it from the two and gates one not gate and one or gate so x y1 based on the connections right x y1 plus x bar y2 and when it comes to the second output if you observe the second output y2 y2 has uh, this has been observed the expression has been observed with respect to x y1 bar so here we have one more gate and not gate that is with respect to y not y1 y1 bar okay plus or gate x bar x bar and y2 isn't it x bar and y2 so uh, the expression this boolean expression we got it from the uh, the state uh, boolean expression we got it from the state diagram so likewise we can write uh, or else we can uh, draw the state table as well with respect to this boolean expression and as well with the uh, circuit uh, state diagram so the analysis of the circuit it starts by considering the excitation variables y1 and y2 as output so here we have observed y1 and y2 as the output so the excitation table this kind of table can be drawn with respect to the uh, expression that we got so as outputs and the secondary variables y1 and y2 as the input so here excitation variables are nothing but y1 and y2 and as well the secondary variables are also y1 and y2 the analysis of the asynchronous sequential machines are observed with respect to the excitation variables and as well the secondary variables y1 and y2 there is nothing but the expressions and the boolean expressions are goes like this x y1 plus x bar y2 this is we have observed with respect to the state diagram okay from the state diagram we can able to uh, write the boolean expression and from this boolean expression we can able to draw the state tables so these are the state tables so ne next the next step is to plot y1 and y2 and now we need to plot this y1 and y2 so this is nothing but the cornog map k maps okay so these are the k maps using the k maps uh, we can now uh, draw the truth tables or else the cornog maps using the above boolean expression so if you observe here we have y1 and y2 and we have the x x as for 0 and 1 and for y1 and y2 we have two uh, categories right y1 and y2 two coefficients so we can go with 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 so 0 0 0 1 1 1 and y0 uh, 1 1 and 1 0 this is how uh, we should consider the Carnot maps 1 1 and 1 0 so here x uh, when it is 0 not right this is x and this is x bar see if you observe this is x bar this is x and y1 bar y2 bar y1 bar y2 y1 y2 y1 and y2 bar so this is for mapping the first expression So this is the expression 1 and this is the expression 2. So this map is with respect to the expression 1 and this map is with respect to the expression 2. Okay, here as well x bar x, y1 y2 bar, y1 bar y2, y1 y2 and y1 y2 bar. So with respect to this boolean expressions all the uh, all the numbers have been given in the k maps okay so one thing we have to remember is uh, with uh, from the state diagram from the state diagram we can able to write the boolean expression boolean expression and from this boolean expression we can able to uh, draw the k maps or cornog maps and now combining the binary value in corresponding squares the following transition table is observed so this is what we have observed with respect to the boolean expression so the transition tables shows value y y1 y2 so we have y y1 and y2 
and for x we have x bar and x simple x. So where y is equals our circle it indicates in the uh, stable condition. So here this is with respect to x bar and x y1 bar y2 bar we have observed 0 0 for this condition that means what in the expression we may we might have seen that uh, x into y, x into y1 bar y2 bar okay so x into y1 bar y2 bar that's how i can write 0 and 1 okay and then for the next state or else for the next value for 0 and 1 for 1 and 1 i can say that this is y1 bar y2 into x bar such that I will get in 1 1 and y1 bar y2 bar into x such that I will be getting 0 1. Okay. So, 0 0 0 1 and 1 1 and 1 0. This, uh, these combinations have been getting with respect to the Boolean expressions that is y1 and y2 as well. So, here the circuit has four stable uh, four stable total states. So, the circuit has this four stable total states whereas 0 0 0 0 0 uh, 0 1 1 see 0 0 0 0 1 1 and 1 1 0 and 1 0 1 or else 1 0 0. Okay. So, uh, and four unstable states. So, these are the four unstable states. These are the four stable states and these are the four unstable states. So, from this analysis, we are saying that from the Boolean expression, see, this is nothing but the state table. So, this state table we have, uh, we can able to draw with respect to the state, uh, uh, with respect to the state expression or it's a Boolean expression. So, the state table of the circuits shown below is here like this. Present state, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Always the present state goes like this. This next state, we have to see with respect to x is equals to 0 and x is equals to 1. So, when x is equals to 0, I can say that for the present state 0 and 0, my input would be 0 and output would be 0 as well. Okay. So, for x is equals to 1, x is equals to 0, my input would be 0 and output would be 0. And for x is equals to 1 state with respect to the present state as 0, 0, my input would be 0 and output goes 1. So, likewise for the next, uh, for the present state 0 and 1, okay, if it is 0, 0, my input is like, or, or, obviously we will be checking the input and output with respect to input and output, right? So, for 0, 0 present state, my input and output as goes like the 0, 0. And for x is equals to 1, my input and output goes as 0 by 1. And for 0, 1, it's 1, 1 and it is 0, 1. And 1, 0, my, it's 0, 0 and 1, 0. And for 1, 1, it is 1, 1 and 1, 0. So, these are the combinations that we can observe with respect to the present state, the, with respect to the next state, the present state input. Okay. So, the next state outputs can be observed with respect to the present state input. So, with our four, four combinations. So, this uh, table uh, uh, tells us like how to map the output or else how the outputs can be observed with respect to the Boolean expressions that we have observed from the uh, state diagram. Okay. And then coming to the flow table. So, the previous example is all about the analysis of asynchronous sequential uh, circuits and now coming with the flow table. What is this flow table? So, during the designing of the analysis, uh, asynchronous sequential uh, circuits, it is more convenient to name the states by letter symbols than by the values. So, here, uh, instead of, instead of, see for example, these are my four states, S1, S2, S3 and S4. So here the flow state is uh, flow table. Uh, it states that when you are considering some states, so instead of giving the binary values that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, it's always good to give the letter symbols. Okay, it's always good to give the symbols. For example, here instead of giving uh, the boolean, uh, instead of giving the binary values as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. How am I giving is, I'm just giving the symbols S1, S2, S3, S4. 
or else you can give p1 p2 p3 p4 okay any alphabet number or any any alphabet you can uh, represent the states okay instead of giving the binary values why because there is a uh, the, we, we can face some difficulty uh, while we are uh, while we we were able to about to uh, represent the output we feel the difficulty right obviously our outputs and inputs will be in terms of binary values right so instead of giving the binary values as the uh, names of the state it's always uh, good to give the binary numbers with respect to the symbols s1 s2 and s3 s4 just for the representation purpose and then such a table is called flow table and this is similar to the transition table except that the internal states are symbolized with letters rather than binary numbers so here uh, the special uh, speciality of this uh, flow table is nothing but uh, in order uh, instead of representing the state names with respect to the uh, binary numbers we are representing it with the letters so the flow table uh, flow table consists of all the states representing with the symbols okay representing with the symbols and even in the transition table as well uh, even the transition table as well we will be representing all states with uh, with the symbols itself but not with the uh, binary numbers like 0, 0, 0, 001 and 101 one. then the flow table also includes the output values of the circuit for each stable uh, for each stable state so as well uh, when we are considering a normal stable state or else uh, a normal state uh, a normal uh, uh, state diagram a normal state diagram consists of all the state and the transitions goes with respect to the input and as well as the output right so similarly this flow table also it includes input and as well as the output values so the output values of the uh, circuit for each stable state so for each stable state we see the output values in the flow table as well so if a transition table has only one stable state in each row then it is called a primitive flow table so here see for example this is a flow uh, this is a flow table right so how come we are saying that it's a flow table why because instead of representing the uh, the binary numbers instead of representing the binary numbers we are representing it with a symbol right so this is a flow table and this flow table is nothing but it's a two state with two inputs and one output so it is a two input and one output flow table whereas it is called a primitive flow table why because here it has one stable state in each row so here it has one stable state and each row so this is a row 1 row 2 row 3 and row 4 so if you observe here in the, in this four rows we see in each and every row there is a one stable state so this is a stable state so one stable state in each and every row so this is a a call a primitive flow table for one uh, for one stable state in each row whereas uh, this particular uh, table state uh, it consists of two states with two inputs and one output so here if you observe this these are the two rows so in the two rows more than one stable state we could see the three stable state in the row one we see the three stable state and in the row two we see the two stable state that means what uh, more than one stable state the more than one stable state the row, the rows can be observed with more than one stable state so this is about the uh, primitive flow table so uh, in the transition it has only one stable state in each row then it is called primitive flow table so primitive flow table consists of only one stable state in each row so we can say that this is a primitive flow, uh, flow table where it is not a primitive flow not a not a primitive flow table why because here more than one time the stable state has been occurred so we are saying that it is not a primitive flow table whereas this one is a primitive flow table because in each row we see a one stable state okay so we don't see any repetition repeating of this uh, stable state won't be occurred in the primitive flow table only one for one row one stable state will be observed and the binary value of the output variable is indicated inside the square next to the state table and is separated from the state table by a comma so here 
it can be separated by comma. So here if you observe, see, this is a comma, right? So these two are separated with the comma. So the statement is telling that the binary value, the binary value of the output variable is indicated inside the square next to the state symbol. And it, uh, so here in this particular uh, table, we are seeing that we have one stable state, more than one stable state, totally three stable state we see, right? So for each state, if you observe a symbol with respect to a binary number, isn't it? So the binary number and symbol, they are uh, separated with a comma, okay? So they are separated with a comma. Likewise, here, totally in the first row, this is row one and this is row two. So totally in the first row, we see the three common stable state will be, uh, is observed. Whereas in row two, we see only two stable state has been observed. But the thing is here, uh, each stable state are separated uh, with a comma. One is with respect to the symbol and the other one will be the binary number. Okay, binary value. So this binary value, it could be of zero or one. And even in a symbol, it could be of A or B, whatever the symbol that you are representing, but make sure that in the non-primitive uh, flow table, we'll be observing that more than one time the stable state, if, you, if it's occurring more than one time, then it is called the non-primitive uh, flow table and the comma is being uh, given for the symbol and as well as for the numbers, okay? For binary value and number, the binary number and as well as the symbol, they both are separated with the comma in each uh, stable states. Okay. And other than the stable state as well, we see a separation between the symbol and as well as the number can be observed with the comma. And to obtain the circuit described by a flow table, it is necessary to assign a distinct binary value to each state. So now finally, now we have observed or else we got the state table, right? So from the state table, now we need to draw the uh, flow table. So in order to uh, to obtain the circuit, now the state diagram we need to draw. So in order to draw the circuit diagram or the state diagram, uh, it is described that the flow table, it is necessary to assign a distinct binary value to each state. So here, in order to draw the state diagram, uh, for each and every state, we must represent the binary value to each and every state. So instead of giving us symbols, okay, instead of giving us symbols, uh, we have to give or else we have to represent each state with the binary numbers, okay, binary numbers. So then such an assignment converts a flow table into a transition table from which we can derive the logic diagram. So here, basically the flow table contains the, uh, contains the input and as well as the output. And here, the stable state can be observed with respect to two things. One is with respect to the figures and uh, with respect to the symbol and the binary values, right? But in order to draw the state diagram in the using the flow table, always uh, represent or else it's always good to write the binary values for each state. So it's always good to represent the each state with the binary values and then so uh, after assigning the binary values to each statement or to each state, to each stable state, then this assignment, it will convert the flow table into a transition table from which we can derive the logic diagram. So here, so after assigning the binary values to the state table, uh, binary values to the uh, stable state. Okay, for example, in the previous example, uh, in this figure, particularly in this figure, I have the stable state. How many stable state? Three stable state. So my three stable state consisting of one with the symbol and the other with the number. Right now, in order to draw the logic state or else logical diagram, in order to draw the diagram, what I have to do is now I, I will be representing the stable state with the logic numbers. Okay. So here my logic numbers instead of A here, I'm representing zero, zero. And for the next stable state, I'm representing zero, one. And the third stable state, I'm representing one, zero. Okay. So likewise, instead of, uh, in terms of uh, symbolic representation, 
it's good to represent in the binary values and then it is easier to draw the logic symbol so this is all about the flow chart uh, flow table converting into a transition table and then from then we can draw it is easier to draw the logic diagram so and now in the asynchronous sequential circuit we will be observing one uh, condition that is nothing but the race condition so what is this race condition race condition is nothing but it exists in asynchronous sequential circuit when two or more binary state values they change value in response to change in the input variable so here in the asynchronous sequential circuits we will be observing this race condition so what is this race condition it is nothing but when two or more binary state variables okay when two or more binary state variables change the, if they are changing in response to change in the input variable so these are my input variables x y z and these are these are the uh, binary state variables these are the state variables so here race condition is nothing but it is telling that when two or more binary state variables when two or more binary state variables can change so these can be changed with respect to the input variable so if you observe any input variable any change in the input variable then obviously the uh, the change can be happen with respect to the state variables okay so that is nothing but the race condition that means when unequal delays are encountered so when you are changing when you are altering the uh, input variables what happens here is we can observe the delays okay when you are changing for example i have three variables a b c so at the input i am going to change all these three variables so there is no uh, there is nothing strong uh, evident that we can change all these three variables at a time okay at a time all these three variables can be altered no way we can alter at different intervals of time so here the uh, so when we are changing at different intervals of time what happens is we see the unequal delays okay unequal delays can be observed when you are altering uh, the variables at the input we can observe the unequal delays so here in the race condition the unequal delays are encountered a race condition may cause the state variable to change in an unpredictable unpred manner so here the state variables to change in an unpredictable manner so when you are changing the input uh, input variables you will be observed that the output variables can also be changed in an unpredictable manner so why we are saying this unpredictable manner because when the changing or so if you observe the alterations are altered when the input variables are altered at different intervals of time we see the uneven of delays so the unequal delays can be observed so when the unequal delays are observed then obviously we see the output cannot be predict at right time okay so that's the reason we are calling that we are saying that the un unpredictable manner the inputs uh, the variables the state variables can be changed in an unpredictable manner so that means what we can't predict okay we can't predict that so and so changes may be occurred that's the reason we are saying that the asynchronous sequential machines the most of the asynchronous sequential machines they face the race conditions why because unpredictable uh, changes can be observed with respect to the output and that are happen or else that can be occurred due to the unequal delays and that is with respect to the race condition okay when you are altering something uh, some input variables and obviously we we'll see the altered or as we see the changes in the output state variables can be altered so when such a process is happening we see the unequal delays are observed so due to this unequal delays the output cannot be predicted properly so unpredictable changes can be happen and this unpredictable changes will be observing only with respect to the race conditions so here the races are classified as so the the, uh, the race conditions uh, we have different races so they are classified as non critical races and as well as the critical races so what is this non critical and critical races we'll discuss so coming to the non critical races 
non critical recess is nothing but if the final stable state that the circuit uh, reaches does not depend on order in which the state variables change the race is called a non critical race so if the final stable state for example 000110 and 11 so this is my final stable state okay so the uh, this this is the final stable state so if the final stable state of the circuit it re uh, reaches does not depend on the order in which the state variable change so for example my the state variable is changing like a a b and c and d so the final stable state has been changed with uh, it, it means that this changes is occurred not with respect to the last stable state okay with not with respect to the last state this changes can occur if you find if you see any change in uh, any change among the four states understand that means what here for example i have a b c d so the final stable state in the circuit does not depend on the order in which the state variables change so these are the state variables so for example this final stable state has been changed so this change occurred the changes so occurred in this stable state does not depends on this particular state that means what state variable b that is the second variable so if the second variable changes obviously the last uh, sta final state variable changes right so this is not the uh, this is not the interpretation or this is not the uh, this is not the right explanation why right? because the, this uh, change this last final stable state can be changed if you change anything with respect to the state variable okay if you change a obviously one of the state uh, final state can be changed if you if, if the input variable b has changed then one of the state variable can be altered so here if the final state table that the circuit reach it does not depends on the order so it does not depends on the order that means what at any time any changes can be happen or else any changes uh, can be occurred in the state variables okay it doesn't mean that first a will change that means first state will change and in after some time and after some delay the second state will change and after some delay the third and fourth like that it, it doesn't mean like that any any time uh, the changes in the state variables can happen at any intervals of time that is nothing but the non critical races so if a circuit whose transition stable start with the total stable state y1 y2 x for example here i have y1 y2 x as 0 0 0 okay then the changes in the input from 0 to 1 so here the uh, for example he is giving that if in a circuit whose transition stable start with total stable state that means for example here i have x 0 1 here 0 0 c 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 it is 0 and 1 this is with respect to y1 and y2 this is with respect to x so here for example y1 and y2 x that means what 0 0 0 so here is a state okay this is a stable state so for this 0 0 0 then then the change in the input from 0 to 1 so here the changes can be observed from 0 to 1 then the state variables it can change from 0 0 to 1 1 that means what from 0 0 to 1 1 at any intervals of time the uh, this value or else the value or else a symbol can change at any intervals of time sometimes for 0 0 it may go like this for 0 and 1 it may go like this for 1 and 0 it may go like this for 1 and 1 it may go like this okay this is nothing but the non critical races the state variable must change from 0 to 1 1 Uh, which define a race condition so here it defining the race conditions it doesn't mean that only at 0 0 uh, at first stable at first state variable we will be observing the uh, stable state it doesn't mean like that at any intervals or it's at any level uh, from 0 to from 0 0 to 1 1 at any level we can observe the state uh, stable state okay 
So this is nothing but the non-critical state. So here, if you observe the possible transitions, so the possible transitions are from 0, 0 to 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And from 0, 0, see. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. It is 0 and 1. Okay, so here, if you observe from 0, 0, it is 1, 1, right? From 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1. And from 0, uh, from 1, 0, it is 1, 1. So, this is what we can observe. And then, in all the cases, the final state is the same, which results in the non-critical conditions. So, uh, whatever the values that you are changing at the input values, it doesn't mean that all the all the state variables can change at a time. Okay, it can change at different intervals of time. But finally, we can see the result of the final state can be uh, the non-critical conditions. So, this is an uh, this is a better example that you observe. See here, it is zero zero. In the previous example 0, 0, 1, 1, right? So 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so here if you observe, it is 0, 0, 1, 1, right? So it is 0, 0, 1, 1. That means what? At x is equals to x bar, x, y1, y2 bar y1 bar y2, y1 y2, y1 y2 bar. So here if you observe for 0 0 condition we can see the 1 1 isn't it? So for 0 0 and we have the 0 1 with respect to 1 1 and for 1 1 for 0 0 we have 1 0 1 0 as 1 1 and finally for 1 1 we can see the 1 1 over here. So the possible transitions we can observe as for 0 0 through 1 1 and from 0 1 1 1 1 0 1 1. So 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. The possible transitions only can be occurred at 0 0 okay and 0 1 and 1 1 and 1 1 itself the possible transitions which can uh, this is nothing but the non-critical race conditions. So this is about the non-critical race conditions. And uh, coming to the critical race conditions, critical race, race uh, conditions are quite opposite to this. So, what is the non-critical race condition saying that it doesn't depends, it doesn't depends the order, okay? It doesn't depends the order like 1, 2, 3 and 4, state variable 1, 2, 3 and 4, it doesn't depends on the order. But whereas if you come across the critical, uh, critical race conditions, if you come across the critical race conditions, then uh, you can see that a particular for one, uh, for one uh, state variable, for one stable state has to be occurred in the output. One uh, particular state variable should be altered at the input. And if uh, if the output, if you are observing at the second one, then the second stable state must be uh, changed at the input. But uh, that means what here? It depends the order. The order will be dependable only in the critical race conditions, whereas the order does not depend, or else it doesn't matter a lot in the non-critical race conditions. So this is a quite a small di uh, differences between the non-critical race and the critical race conditions. But one thing you have to observe that uh, the race conditions will be occurred only in the uh, the race conditions can be seen only in the uh, asynchronous sequential machines, but not in the synchronous sequential machines because in the asynchronous sequential machines, uh, the time delay, we see the unequal time delays, okay. Unpredictable time delays can be observed in the uh, asynchronous sequential machines. Uh, when we are observing the unpredictable uh, uh, time delays, obviously the output can be unpredictable. Okay, whereas in the synchronous sequential circuits, everything is going with respect to the time. Okay, uh, so because of that reason, we can say that the output can be predicted. So for a, a different intervals of time, uh, if the, any changes are, uh, if any changes occur in the input input variables, the output state can be observed, or else the transitions can from the one state to the other state can be easily observed with different intervals of time. So in the previous classes, we have discussed right in the synchronous sequential machines. Uh, for the present state, for the present state, 
it if it is t the next state we can observe at t plus 1 that means what if my states are a and b so my state goes with a x and the next state goes with the a x plus 1 plus b x okay so this is b x plus 1 so that means what for the next state the time goes with respect to t plus 1 okay and the storage elements can be uh, in the synchronous sequential machines. The storage elements we consider is the flip flop and latches because of the flip flops and latches have clock pulses at different intervals of time. The changes can be uh, changes can be seen. But whereas in the synchronous sequential machines, uh, usually non clocked uh, uh, storage elements can be considered. Those are nothing but the latches. So here, as we are considering the latches, which are non-clocked synchronous sequence, uh, non-clocked uh, uh, storage devices. So here, uh, they, we, there's no much dependency on the time is being uh, seen in the synchronous sequential circuits. And coming, uh, we have discussed about the flow table, uh, which is compared with the state table. Okay, so the only difference at uh, here in the flow table is instead of uh, representing with the uh, numbers logical numbers we are presenting it with the symbols okay so that is a, a basic difference between the flow table and the state table instead of representing the state uh, instead of uh, representing the stable state with respect to the um, in binary values we are representing it with the symbols and finally when it comes to the analysis of the asynchronous sequential circuits okay in order to draw the logical synthesis or it's a logical diagram it's always good to represent the stable state in the logical uh, stable state using in the binary values okay always it's good to uh, represent the stable states with respect to the binary values only if you are able to if you if you just want to draw the logical diagram in order to draw the logical diagram it's always good to uh, represent the stable state with respect to the binary values but uh, simply just to show uh, the flow table uh, it's okay to represent the stable state with respect to the symbols and also uh, in with uh, this example or and also when it comes to the um, uh, uh, when it comes to the primitive flow okay in the prim primitive flow more than more than once the stable states will be occurred and uh, the binary values and the symbols can be uh, differentiated or else they can be differentiated with respect to the comma okay using comma operator we can separate the symbols and as well as the binary values but in order to draw the logical figures logical symbols it's always good to represent the uh, binary values instead of the symbols and uh, also and also we have discussed about the analysis of the asynchronous sequential circuits how the next state variables or the next state output can be observed with respect to the present state inputs okay if you observe any changes in the present state inputs the output uh, changes will be observed at different intervals of time that, that means what basically it's not with respect to time uh, unpredictable changes can be happen in the input uh, so that we can see the output output variables to be unpredicted at diff, uh, at no inter, uh, at no time delays okay and uh, also uh, we have discussed about uh, the ra ra race conditions, race conditions, and we have critical uh, races and as well as the uh, non-critical races. So, non compared to the non-critical races, critical races uh, uh, are a bit difficult in order to get the uh, uh, state output state variables in order to predict the output state variables, whereas uh, non-critical states are more easier when it comes to the critical race conditions. Okay, so this is about the analysis of asynchronous sequential machines. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.